The NFL trade deadline has officially come and gone, and the Las Vegas Raiders did absolutely nothing. And today we're going to talk about it. You know, in my opinion, the Raiders are in a, in a very interesting spot where, you know, we're not the Cardinals. We're not that type of team. We're not, from a roster perspective, so bad that we need to, you know, do a complete rebuild. But we're also not the Philadelphia Eagles where we have a Super Bowl roster, right? That's not where the Raiders are. Uh, the Raiders also don't know how to win yet. A lot of our players are not winners. A lot of these guys haven't had success in the NFL, especially the guys that we've drafted and have kind of kept. The Raiders got to figure it out at this point. And, you know, I thought one of the things the Raiders could have done is possibly looked at some of the guys where there are teams like the Cardinals that are possibly ready to move on from a couple of guys. You know, Xavier Collins is a linebacker that the Cardinals have. He's turned his career around a little bit. He's pretty good this season. Uh, he was a guy that I, I would have hoped that the Raiders target. Um, I know it's within the division. It probably wouldn't make sense. But like Jerry Judy would have been another example or Patrick Sertain, right? If you had to give up your first round pick, uh, that's a guy you could possibly target. Um, and I'm not saying the Raiders should have given up this year's first round pick, right? I think everybody knows where the Raiders currently are with their head coach and quarterback. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But I felt like there were players out there that the Raiders could have possibly went out and bought, right? Uh, the Washington Commanders are another team. The Washington Commanders are clearly tanking this season. They traded their two best defensive ends in both Chase Young and Montez Sweat. Now, Montez Sweat is a little bit older than Chase Young. Uh, but if Chase Young was actually available, and I did not think he was going to be available, but had you told me yesterday that Chase Young is available, I would have said trade a second and a third round pick for that guy. That guy has massive upside to be some of the, you know, one of the best edge players in the NFL and I did not think he would actually be available but those are the type of players the Raiders should have went out and got because those are the type of players you know the Raiders are going to have to pay players right you're going to have to invest money in certain guys and Chase Young's a guy I would absolutely invest money in now I know we got Tyree Wilson but I think there's a way you can make Tyree Wilson Chase Young and Max Crosby all work on the field at the same time and that would have given you a great defensive line for the next 10 years and I would have said the Raiders should make that happen. And the fact he went for a third round pick is insane to me. Now, some people are going to say he's not very good. He hasn't had a lot of success. But this year specifically, the guy's finally healthy. Remember, in year two, Chase Young tore his ACL. In year three, he was rehabbing. And in year four, which is this year, the guy has six sacks, multiple quarterback hits, is an absolute disruptive force. And he has a lot of high quality wins against guys like Jordan Malata, against Jake Matthews. Uh, these are top tier left tackles in the NFL. The guy has a lot of really, really good wins. And those are the players that the Raiders could have possibly went out and got. You know, the Jacksonville Jaguars traded for Ezra Cleveland, who I think is a pretty good guard, although the Vikings, you know, he didn't really work in that scheme and system, but they traded him for a six round pick. And those are the type of players that the Raiders should have possibly targeted. Um, you know, Leonard Williams may not make sense because Leonard Williams is more so of a short term, you know, pickup. Um, guys like you know, J.C. Jackson, for example, would also be a short-term pickup because these guys are a little bit older in their careers. But I felt like the Raiders should have possibly targeted some of these guys that could be here for the long run, right? Because every year teams are looking to sell certain guys, right? Like the 49ers didn't trade for Christian McCaffrey last season only for one year. Like McCaffrey is going to be with the 49ers for the next five years, minimum, right? He's going to probably finish his career with San Francisco. And to me, those are the moves the Raiders should have possibly went out and got now I get it you don't trade a first round pick definitely don't want to trade the first maybe a second but like with the third fourth and fifth we've already seen what Dave Ziegler has kind of done and I would have loved for the Raiders to gotten better right now let's talk about this this other aspect of this entire thing right would the Raiders be a playoff team this season with a Chase Young or with you know, a Donovan Peoples shown who ended up getting traded to the Lions. I'm going to say no, they, they probably would not have been. And the reason why is because our head coach and quarterback just aren't good enough. And I, I don't even know, honestly, if Josh McDaniels is a good coach, to be honest with you guys, because at the end of the day, especially this year, Jimmy Garoppolo is terrible. He is, he is arguably the worst quarterback I've ever seen. Like, and I'm talking specifically as I've actually started scouting quarterback scouting and watching tape and those type of things. Um, I would make the argument based off of what Jimmy G did yesterday, especially that was the worst quarterback performance I've ever seen. 
Uh, and I've seen some bad performances, right? I watched the Jamarcus Russell years, although at that time it was different. I didn't scout and actually do those type of things. But watching the tape of Jimmy G yesterday, the guy is terrible. And I'm not sure why Josh McDaniels hasn't made the decision to move forward and, and have Aiden O'Connell be the starter. I'm not sure if it's because maybe McDaniels feels like if we do roll forward with Aiden O'Connell, maybe we win a couple games, maybe we win four or five games. And if we do win four or five games, not only will we not make the playoffs, we'll still end up with the worst pick than if we start Jimmy G the rest of the season. I, I truly think Josh McDaniels truly believes Jimmy Garoppolo is the only way for the Raiders to get a high draft pick. Because something tells me that Josh McDaniels isn't really worried about Mark Davis possibly firing him, about him losing his job. Something tells me McDaniels is not worried about that. Something truly, truly, truly tells me that Josh McDaniels has already been told that he'll have a couple seasons after this season, maybe another full season, maybe a year after that as well. And maybe the plan is to get a quarterback. All right, because I would honestly make the argument if the Raiders had a better quarterback, we would be a better football team. And that doesn't mean that, hey, we should have stuck with Derek Carr. Ultimately, I think for the Raiders, Moving on from Derek Carr at that time made sense, right? We didn't have a top seven defense. Although our defense is better this year, it's still not a top seven defense, right? The Saints have one of the best defenses in the NFL. It made sense for a team like the Saints to get Derek Carr, right? They can support that type of quarterback. As, you know, a team like the Vikings can support Kirk Cousins, how the Titans were able to support Ryan Tannehill for a number of years, right? I think for the Saints, it made sense for them to get a Derek Carr type of quarterback. For the Raiders, on the other hand, it makes sense for us to go out and get a rookie quarterback, not Jimmy G, right? Jimmy G is, you know, the type of quarterback that needs the support from the defensive side. And our defense has stepped up this year. Let's just be honest. It's the best defense we've had in 10 to 15 years. I don't think anyone would debate that. But I think the Raiders are also in this unique position where if they had a better quarterback, and I still think they need a better coach as well, I think we're not that far off from actually being a legit team. You know, you look at our defense. And the amount of turnovers we forced, like we forced more turnovers this year in the last like three three games that we've played than all of the last like four or five years in each of the individual seasons. Um, the Raiders have struggled forcing turnovers, and that's not true for the first time this year. The defense is playing a lot better. And it's unfortunate because on the offensive side, they continuously failed the defensive side. And I feel like if our defense plays the way that they're cu- currently playing now, And you add one or two more pieces if, you know, Tyree Wilson takes the next step and becomes a good force off the edge. If, you know, Byron Young develops, which I don't really have confidence in him, but maybe it's someone else. Maybe it's Nesta Jade Severa. If he develops, if Divine Diablo develops, if Trey Von Merrick continues to get better, if Nate Hobbs continues to get better, maybe Amik Robertson, you know, continues to play better. If the Raiders continue to improve with the guys that they have on the defensive side and they add one or two pieces to that defense, and let's say you have a new head coach, a new quarterback, you're not that far off, right? I think the Raiders can have success, but I do feel like there are losers because they did not go out and get, go out and get a Chase Young for a third round pick. That's such a, you know, that's such a low, that's such a low pick to give up. And ultimately, you know, when Chase Young goes and signs with another team, as long as he gets signed for $18 million, you're going to get a third round pick right back, right? So it doesn't make sense to me why the Raiders wouldn't have possibly made that move. Uh, there are reports out there about Chase Young, and I get it. You know, maybe he'll never be good. We'll see what actually ends up happening. Uh, Montez, that was another guy the Raiders could have possibly targeted. And, and if you didn't want to get a def- defensive end, uh, I understand that that may not make sense, but then maybe you go out and get Cam Akers, who, you know, I think he's way more explosive than Josh Jacobs. And I'm not saying Josh Jacobs is a bad running back or anything like that. I'm just saying the Raiders need more speed on the offensive side. And of course, you can always add a Cam Akers type of player through the draft. But, you know, do we really trust this front office and and, and this regime to actually get it right? Like, I would make the argument and... You know, it's crazy because I made this, I made this point after the Raiders drafted the guys that they drafted. I made this point and I got a lot of pushback for it. But Dave Ziegler is kind of bad at drafting. He's kind of bad at scouting and analyzing talent. Um, you know, for some reason we took Tyree Wilson over Jalen Carter. The Raiders felt it was a bigger risk that Jalen Carter's, you know, has this, you know, he got arrested or, or whatever the, the situation that happened, right? He had this entire thing happen. He didn't technically get arrested, but he had this entire scenario happen. 
uh, in which someone passed away in a, in a car accident. Apparently, he was one of the guys racing with that car. You know, Dave Ziegler thought that situation would have been worse than the fact that Tyree Wilson had a foot injury and we didn't know how bad it could could end up being. The fact that Tyree Wilson still had to develop the hand-to-hand passers technique. Dave Ziegler literally thought it was better to take Tyree Wilson over Jalen Carter. They, he literally thought that Darnell Wright couldn't be the Raiders' long-term right tackle. Right, The Raiders have massive issues on the offensive line, and we could have shored that up with Darnell Wright, who literally went two picks after right, the, the, the Tyree Wilson. So to me, those are the decisions that uh, Dave Ziegler has made. And even beyond that, you know, the Michael Mayer p- uh, pick looks good, right? I'll be the first to tell you guys, I think he's going to put it together and have a good season. Or not a good season, but he'll have a good career. It may take two years. Uh, but he'll eventually down the line be a good tight end. But then you look at like Byron Young, who's a third round pick. That's a massive, massive mistake to take Byron Young. Like I would have put probably like eight defensive tackles ahead of Byron. I didn't even have Byron Young ranked, right? That I watched this tape one time months back and said, this guy's not good. I don't know if this guy's going to get drafted. I'm not even going to rank him in my top defensive tackles. That was what Byron Young was. And that wasn't just for me. A lot of people felt like that. And the Raiders took him with third third round pick. So to me, Dave Ziegler may not have the eye to be able to really fix this roster, which also kind of makes me feel like, are we going to get the right quarterback when that time comes, right? Like once the Raiders make this pick with this quarterback, right? Like let's say we have the sixth overall pick and let's say Drake May and Caleb Williams are off the board and now you have these other four quarterbacks and no one really knows where they're ranked. Are you going to take Bo Nix or, or, you know, Phoenix Jr. or whoever else it may be? And are we sure that's going to be the right pick, right? And do we trust Dave Ziegler and Josh Daniels that they're going to make that right pick? I don't know. I really don't know, right? Uh, ultimately, I think the Las Vegas Raiders should have looked to possibly trade for someone, but the fact that they didn't kind of tells you what the Raiders may think about this roster and kind of where they're at. I can almost feel, you know, I can almost think to myself that maybe Dave Ziegler, Josh McDaniels have talked it through with Mark Davis. And the plan is that, hey, let's not trade our picks away. Let's not trade away our assets either. Let's just look to continue to slowly improve the team. And eventually down the line, as the team continues to get better and better and better, We'll eventually get that quarterback. Maybe it's in the draft this year. Maybe we trade for Justin Fields or Kyler Murray. At some point, the Raiders will get that quarterback. And hopefully, as long as we don't sell our assets and we continue to add pieces and and talent through the draft, you know, maybe the Raiders will eventually down the line be a good team. But we'll see what ends up happening because that could be two or three years down the line. And if we do take a quarterback and he ends up being a bust, that's like four more years of our life gone at that point, right? So... I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I would have loved for the Raiders to add players at the trade deadline. I get why you don't do it. I'm glad that the Raiders did not trade Devontae Adams because had they done that, had they traded away Devontae Adams, at that point, you just trade away, you know, whatever assets you may have, right? The Colton Millers, the Max Crosby's potentially, right? But I'm glad the Raiders did not trade any of their guys that really matter to this team. Uh, we'll see how the Raiders continue, right? I'm going to continue supporting the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, if that's something you guys want on this channel, then you let me know that in the comments below, right? I think the last thing I'm going to do is be negative because I could have done that for the entirety of the Josh McDaniels era, right? could have been negative, but I chose not to, and we are where we're at. So uh, we'll continue supporting the Raiders. Obviously, today was the trade deadline, so we had a lot of that type of talk. But as we go forward, do note, we're going to get into a lot of film and we're going to break down the game for the uh, Lions Raiders game. Uh, there's a couple of players to really analyze. Apparently, Greg Van Roten had, he was one of the highest graded players for the Raiders. So we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later on, man. Subscribe. I'll see you guys next time with another video.